Me, Myself, Millie by Penelope Bush. Read for you by Brandon Reese Taylor on the Jesse Millet YouTube channel. Chapter 1 This week at the counselling session, Mr. Mr. Jessup, or Ted, as he keeps telling me to call him, suggested I write a journal. He said it in that voice of his, which he probably thinks is calming and hip, hip, and hypnotic, but which is usually so monotonous I have trouble staying awake during the session. Millie, I think you should keep a journal, a private record of all, record of all your hopes and fears. Pour it out on the page. Say what you're really feeling. Huh, what a joke. He's not saying what he's really th feeling. What he actually means is, Millie, you come here to talk about what happened last April. Only you, only you won't, so I'm hoping you'll write it down instead and let me off the hook. Sure enough, he followed on by saying, Perhaps you could write about what happened. You might find that easier than talking about it. Is he mad? Why would I write about it if I can't talk about it? I mean, when you talk, the words disappear into thin air. You say them and then they're gone. But when you write them down, they're solid on the page. They're forever. I couldn't do that. So when he tried to hand me a thick, spiral-bound, hardback notebook, I sat on my hands. He didn't take the hint and just stood there holding it out towards me. It was pale turquoise, covered in tiny pink and green flowers and butterflies. It was pretty. And he looked so pathetic, I thought the least I could do was take it. I'll think about it, I lied, shoving it into my bag, and then the timer on his cooker started beeping, which meant it was, th it was the end of the session. I had no intention of writing a journal, but when I got on the bus to go home, I started thinking about it. I wasn't even sure what a journal was. Was it like a diary? Journal. It sounded like journey. An account of some bloke's expedition to the frozen wastes of the Antarctic, maybe, that he wrote with frostbitten fingers, huddled in a tent while the wind whipped at the tent flaps, or a woman in hopelessly comfortable Victorian clothing, fighting her way up the Amazon, clutching her leather-bound journal to her, corset, her corseted bosom. Both images, I realised, were from way back in the past, when there was still some unknown corner of the globe to be explored. Not like these days, when the whole world is there on Google Earth for everyone to see. I couldn't decide if that was sadly unromantic or wildly exciting, but whatever. The word journal sounded old-fashioned and a bit dusty, which was so typical of Ted. If I'd gone to the school counsellor, like the social worker suggested, she'd probably be telling me I should keep a blog. A few weeks ago, the social worker they'd assigned to me after the incident came round to say that she thought I needed to see a counsellor. Mum said we were fine, or would be fine if the authorities would just leave us alone and stop sticking their noses in where they weren't wanted. Mum hates the authorities. No one mentioned Lily, who was sitting in the armchair in the corner with her legs tucked under her. But then it wasn't Lily who needed a counsellor, it was me who needed one, and I realised at that moment that, there was, that this was the first time in 14 years I would be doing something significant on my own, without Lily. It was a huge, frightening thought, but I said, I want to go. Mum looked hurt, but she couldn't really forbid me. Lily snorted in that derisive way of hers, so I pretended she wasn't there. Things haven't been the same between us since the incident. That's what I call the thing that happened last April, the incident. She hates all the attention I'm getting, but she can't do anything about it. It's not like I asked for any of it to happen. If anything, it's her fault, and she knows that. So she's keeping quiet, which is weird for someone so noisy. It's spooking me. The social worker was droning on about going to the school counsellor because she was good and it was convenient because I wouldn't have to travel. That's when I got to thinking about going back to school and I was seized with panic. Can I talk to you alone? I, I said to the social worker. Mum took the hint. She's good like that, mad keen on giving us our personal space and privacy and fa failing to see the irony. As a twin, I never get any personal space, and privacy is also in short supply in our basement flat. I'll go and make some tea, she said, leaving the room. L Lily didn't leave, even though I glared at her. 
My social worker is called Carmel, which sounds suspiciously like camel. As she has straw-coloured hair and large front teeth, it's an unfortunate name. Still, I'm hardly in a position to criticise first names, as I was named after a muddy puddle. It was still glaring. I was still glaring at Lily, and Carmel glanced over at the armchair, but she didn't say any. But she didn't say anything. That's another problem with being a twin. People tend to treat you as one person instead of two. Anyhow, I didn't really care if Lily heard what I was going to say. It was my decision, and there there was nothing she could do to stop me. I want to change schools. I want to go to a different school, and I want you to help me sort it out. We both knew it was too much for Mum to cope with at the moment. Lily snorted again, but I ignored her. Now I had the idea and said it aloud. Now I had the idea and said it out loud. It had taken hold. I knew I had to do this if I was going to keep my sanity. Carmel didn't look so sure. I don't know, she said. It's a big change, and I'm not sure that's such a good idea at the moment. What about your friends? You'll need their support. No, I cut in. I need a new. I need a new start. I wasn't about to explain that apart. I wasn't about to explain that apart from Lily. There was no friends at school. Not really. That's another thing about being a twin. You're a unit, and it, and it sort of stops at other people getting close. They assume you don't need anyone else. Besides, most most other girls are a bit scared of Lily. She's so full on. I half expected her to make a scene now. I half expected her to make a scene now about me going to a new school without her. It was a mad idea, one I'd never have, one I'd n- one I'd never have had before the incident. But she must have known that. But she must have known that one of her dramatic tantrums. Tantrums would have no, but she must have known that one of her dramatic tantrums would have no effect on Carmel, so she didn't bother. Why don't you wait a bit? Go back to school, see how it feels, and then you can want. And then, if you still want to change, we'll see. No, I said again, surprised by my own daring. I'm not used to disagreeing with people or standing up for myself. Lily usually does that for both of us. But then a lot has changed recently, and I suppose I'd get better at it. And I suppose I'd better get used to it. Carmel's a very forceful woman, though, and I knew that just saying no wasn't going to be enough to convince her it was the right thing for me. Please, I said, going for sympathy instead. So much for the new assertive me. Carmel had seen. Carmel had been sent here by the police as part of the victim support unit, so really it was her job to help me. Please, I said again. I can't bear the thought of people staring at me and pointing and whispering. They'll know what's happened, obviously, and I miss the whole of the summer term. I couldn't bear it, honestly. I really need a new start, somewhere I can just be me. I got the new start. I got the new start idea from Archie's mum. I heard her talking to Je- Jenny upstairs about. I heard her talking to Jenny upstairs about moving out. I think it's best, she said. After all that's happened, that Archie has a new start and we can put it behind us. I didn't blame her. It would be nice to walk away from it all, which is something I'll never be able to do. Carmel stood up and Lily uncurled her legs and launched herself from the chair and from the room. She didn't look at. She didn't look at me once. She didn't look at me once. I'll talk to some people and get back to you," said Carmel. "If you're sure it's what you want, I expect we can sort something out. I'm sure," I told her, though I wasn't. Not really. It was the first major decision I'd ever made on my own. Then Mum came back in and said she knew a really good counsellor who I could get to, so Carmel didn't need to worry about that any more. I could tell Carmel wasn't too happy about it. Perhaps she thought, like I did, that Mum was fobbing her off, and there wasn't really any counsellor. But Mum was using her no-nonsense voice, so Carmel didn't argue the point. But it turned out Mum was serious, which I, which is how I ended up seeing Ted. And now he's given me a journal to write, and although I don't want to do it, at least it's given me something new to think about. I spent the last however many weeks trying not to think, which of course is impossible. The more you try not to think about something, the more you end up thinking about it. 
The incident has become like a film in my head, on a never-ending reel, that plays itself over and over. Sometimes it plays whatever exact... Sometimes it plays what actually happened, and sometimes it plays what might have happened, what could have happened. I let that one play on. The one where we all came... The one... I let that one play on. The one where we all come home laughing and happy. The one where nothing has changed us forever. My journal, by myself, Millie Pond. This is my journal. I don't know what I'm going to write yet. Probably just anything, except what happened. I had decided I wasn't going to bother, and I'd pretended I was doing it for Ted. And I pretended I... And I'd pretended I... And I'd pretend I was doing it if Ted asked. But then I made the mistake of telling Mum about it. When I got home from Ted's this afternoon, Mum was withdrawn and I could see she was feeling down. In an attempt to distract her, I got the notebook I got the notebook out of my bag and told her about Ted's idea. It didn't cheer her up. It didn't cheer her up. What? I said as she tutted loud What? What? I said when she tutted loudly. I'm sure Ted means well, but really? He can't know much about 14-year-old girls if he thinks they're capable of keeping up a journal. I was offended. Why shouldn't I be capable? She might have been right if it was Lily she was talking to. I doubt she'd do it. I, sh I doubt she'd be able to do it. She's got the concentration span of a butterfly, at the best of times. I'm not going to tell Lily about the journal. Sure, she'll probably be even ruder than Mum and tell me to get a life or something. Then she'll read it when I'm not here. I'll have to think of somewhere to hide it where Lily won't, would never look. I can't put it under the mattress because that's too obvious. I think I'll keep it in the doll's house because Lily never goes near it. It sits on the chest of drawers between our beds and Lily wanted to get rid of it last year. She said it was embarrassing that we were too old, that we were too old to still have a doll's house, but I wouldn't let her. At first I couldn't think of anything to write. All those blank pages freaked me out, so I did a sort of title page like they have in books. The journal, of Mil the journal of Millie Pond sounded too formal, so in the end I just wrote my... I just put my journal right in the middle. Then, for some reason, I added by myself. I don't know why I wrote that and wanted to cross it out, but that would have made a mess, so I put my name, Millie Pond, just to make things absolutely clear. Now it looks like something a six-year-old would have done. How any... Anyhow... I'd filled, anyhow, I'd filled a whole page, which felt good until I turned over and there was another blank page. God, who would have thought about, who would have thought writing could be so difficult? I don't know how mum does it. I must have sat here chewing on my biro for half, for about half an hour before I decided that it didn't, I must have sat here chewing on my biro for about half an hour before I decided that it doesn't really matter what I write because I don't think Ted wants to read it. I think he just wants me to write it. I'd better check, though, next time I see him, just in case. All that got me wondering about Mum. All that got me wondering about Mum. She writes and illustrates books for a living. I wonder if she panics when she sees a blank page. I doubt it. She probably sees it as... A... I doubt it. She probably sees it as an opportunity. I'll try and think like that from now on.